Yo, yo, yo. Hello, everybody. Hey, Oteo. Hey, Justo. We got Svengali. Joe Kaiser's here at the start. Would you look at that? Hi, everybody. Sorry, let me just get my screen already up here. Oh, we got oh, all the regulars. Look at you all. Nico, Joe, Justin, Svengali. It's okay that you've missed a few. Don't stress. Life gets busy sometimes. Acid's here. Oh, hi, everybody. Thanks for the props already. Oh, starting the day off strong. What's up, everybody? We're painting a Ninja Turtle today. Like Nico said, it is a very... I guess my mic's over here. Highly anticipated. Again, I know I feel like I've been saying that often, but highly anticipated Ninja Turtle. Acid's painting tonight. Is this your first time painting live? I can't remember, but either way, I'm excited. <laughs> yes! And it's a Ninja Turtle. Okay. And people are like, which one are we painting? Like, because we're not painting like their stance or anything, realistically, you can choose whatever color you want. Like, who do you want? I like Donatello. I like purple. But um, you can easily change out the, when I talk about purple, you change it to whatever color you want. Okay. And like, look at how easy our initial shapes are. Oops, I missed a screen. Like, okay, easy peasy, am I right? We're doing a side, well, I'm doing it sideways. We don't have to. Can I sneak it up here maybe? Will that stay? As it's making their own Ninja Turtle. So, look, that's an option too. Oh my God, should I make it pink? Maybe I'll make it purple and then just add pink at the end. Just for y'all who want to do purple as well. Um, I do think it's going to be, like, a pretty good one. Like, not good, like, easier, fun. How many painters do we got tonight, then? How many painters in the house today? Also, let me know if my internet lags or anything. Let me know how my sound is. I don't know why, but now that I just do it once a week, I feel like I forget how to stream every time. Um, so let me know. How's everybody doing? Oh my God, Justin made a good call. He was like, the Ninja Turtle needs a Tay bun. And I love the trademark. <laughs> he said, he needs a Tay bun with like a TM on it. I love that. Thanks, Momager. Also, I did not put it as plus 17 today. So I'm gonna make sure I'm respectable. I wish I could follow and draw this. I'm only here to watch. Matt, that's okay. Don't worry about it. I'm sure you're working because you're a busy guy. We're happy to have you in the peanut gallery anyway. You usually come with great facts. So maybe feel the pressure that you have to give us a fact or two. <gasps> um, Ilum's pumped that now that it's not plus 17, his dog can watch. <laughs> you kill me. You guys kill me. But I'm happy. I'm happy we're all here today. Like I said, happy Thursday. Time's flying. I don't know about y'all, but it is for me. Like, it's May 20th today, everybody. Everybody watching on YouTube, today was May 20th. We're almost through May. I posted on my Instagram making fun of Edmonton um, a couple days ago because it was snowing there and it was beautiful here. And then today is not beautiful. So, instant karma for me. But um, I think we're just going to get into it. I don't know how long this one's going to take. Again, as I should mention right away, I put his name down there. Um, this painting that we are working on right now, not my original, okay? So when we look at this down here, I don't want anyone to think that I'm trying to take credit for the original picture. That is by Alfonso Gonzalez, if I pronounce that properly. Probably not because I butcher everything. Um, so... Great artist, obviously. If you actually, you should Google their name. Um, 
and you'll see I think there's a lot of Ninja Turtle art, a lot of great art. Um, our piece is going to be very different than his. This is just, as you guys know, it's always great to have a reference point, um, something to look at. At least that's the type of artist that I am. Um, Cowabunga dudes, here comes Cinderella. Hello. Oh, Sarah, your sister's due date's today, and she does not want to evacuate. <laughs> just chilling. Chilling so that mama can have a paint night, right? Just kidding. I'm assuming that you don't want to paint the day of your due date. Who knows? We'll see. Um, Justin, on October 3rd, he asked what day it was. It was October 3rd. Oh, that reminds me. We're doing a time lapse. I don't know why that reminded me. Um, and then we're going to go. My ADD is kicking today. And then we'll go right into getting started. Okay? Sorry, you just like see my face so close. Uh, turning this around. Good. Let's get this show on the road. Cinderella actually just remembered sh you can thank her for uh, Ninja Turtle Night because she messaged me when I was trying to pick what we were doing for the month uh, and asked for Ninja Turtle and it just clicked perfect. So a uh, thank you Cinderella from everyone. Everyone else who's also excited to do a Ninja Turtle. Pumped. We've got a for you pumped. Me too. Like I said, I think it's gonna be good. Let's get to it. Stop me rambling. All right, let's go through the rules of the road here. Number one, I am not a trained painter, so please let me know. Trained painter. <laughs> this is how today is gonna go, obviously. I'm not a trained teacher, okay? Um, I am just an artist, so if I have explained something wrong, fast, confusing, let me know. I will never be offended if you ask me to slow down or to explain something better because that helps me become a better teacher too. And you'll help people watching on YouTube later like Matt said he's going to be watching after. So maybe you will help him later. Um, number two is you can start with pencil also on this one. For sure you can start with pencil if you rather. Some people are more comfortable with a pencil on a canvas um, than a brush to do those type of drawing lines. I'll tell you when it's time to paint if you start with a pencil, but I will be teaching everybody with a brush as I usually do. Okay? Sorry, my lips are real chapped today. Nico is a pencil gang. That's true. You've always been a pencil game. Uh, gang. Not game. And like I said, some people prefer that and have better control, and that's fine. You go for it if you rather that, okay? Um, I just like to stress that like you don't have to do everything exactly like I am. If something feels better in a way that you know how to do it, Please do it. I'm just here to help along the process. When you guys freestyled, I love that. Um, number three, don't treat your painting too precious, okay? It's very easy to get stuck. So close, trying to just like make every brush stroke so perfect that you are not having fun because you're stressed. And um, the painting usually turns out worse because it feels the stress. So I'm trying to let you jam it in your head that it's very hard to mess up the painting when you're using acrylic paint once it dries you can put white paint on top of it no mistakes okay if something goes wrong oh am i lagging oh there we go um if something goes wrong we can usually solve it okay just let me know and again because if your problem might be the same as somebody else's out there um and we will help it'll be great okay Number four is trust the process because halfway through, your painting is going to look weird. Like it's going to look like this up here. And you're going to be like, what is this girl teaching me? It looks like nothing. But I need you to hold on till the end. It's usually the last few brush strokes, outlines, highlights that bring the painting together. Um, and nine times out of town, everyone is happy at the end. Okay? Trust the process. It's important. I'm trying to teach myself that on a painting I'm working on over there. We can talk about that later. Number three, water is your friend because we are using acrylic paint and acrylic paint is water-based. So water will help solve a lot of problems you might face on the canvas, like your paint not pulling far or it getting like sandpapery. Um, water will solve those problems. So I will say that a million times. You're probably going to get annoyed, but water is your friend, okay? I try to tell you amounts of water, like how much you should try to have on your brush. Um... Yeah, that's that. Uh, and then <laughs> my brain's already just like, pew. Um, and number six is have fun, okay? We're just all here together. There's usually a 
the same people here live, which is awesome. There's always a new face here and there, but it's nice to be just a little community that's just painting along for a couple hours, forgetting about what's going on in the world, and just painting Ninja Turtles. Okay? Justin, number seven, fish or friends, not food. <laughs> okay. First, before I start, <laughs> I like that, Justin. But yeah, they are food, too. Is everybody, am I leggy to other people? Or just Cinderella? Because if I am consistently leggy, I think I know the problem. Um, and I will solve it. But only like once. Okay. I'm okay on your own? Okay. Okay, okay, okay. So, I, you guys, Dan, for a, over a year and a bit, he, every time that I um, do a paint night, like live stream, he like doesn't play <laughs> Call of Duty because he doesn't want to take the internet. But today we thought we'd try it. But if it's lagging hard, um, he said he'll stop. So, y'all got to tell me. Cause it's funny, on YouTube, you guys don't see the lag anyway. So watching this, you're like, get with the show, girl. Um, all right, we got Tender Bear. Who else we got in here? Oh, hello. I bet yeah, Ninja see me coming in. <laughs> I bet yeah, Ninja see me coming in. Coming in with a pun. Love it. Okay. Cat attack too. Justin, say hey before you start painting. What do you mean? Hey. Is that what you mean? Oh. <laughs> okay. I think I'm lagging a little bit, but I'll just say. Everyone's saying, hey, okay, okay, okay. Okay, okay, we'll just start. We'll just go for it. Yeah, after I said it. Okay. Burgundy, you're the problem. Okay. Let's get this Ninja Turtle show on the road. So, if you are somebody who just has your um, primary colors, which I talk about, right? If you have black, white, red, yellow, and blue, you can mix any color, and that is totally fine if you don't have green. If you have a green, it's usually easier. Green is probably one of the harder colors to mix. Um, but if you are mixing your green, take out blue and yellow, and you can play around with like adding white to it. Maybe you add more yellow than blue. It's all really just a touchy, touchy game, okay? Um, some people love mixing colors. Some people, like myself, don't. So up to you, right? Doesn't matter. Um, I, yes, dark green would be the best. If you want exact, oh, I'm just gonna, I see myself lagging on here. Um, okay. A phalo. Cinderella's phaloing it. I'm probably going to use, that's not what I meant. Um, I'm probably going to use chromium oxide green. What a appetizing name. Well, let's just try over here. Okay. Does it work? Video laggy audio good. Okay. Yeah. That's too bad. Okay, okay, okay. I have heavy body acrylic chromium oxide green. Am I allergic to that one? We'll see. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> if I start sneezing or scratching my nose or doing this, then yes, the answer to that will be yes. So, we are going to yeah, permanent green works. Um, you can use phthalo green too. Oh my gosh, whatever you want. I maybe add a little bit of yellow to it. Um, but again, we can play around with it. We'll figure that out as we go. Okay, let me know. So Dan got off now. So if it's still laggy, then that wasn't the problem. And we can tell him and he can go back on. So let me know if I'm still laggy, okay? All right, ever way better. Okay, oh, that's too bad that it doesn't. We can't do both. That makes me sad for Daniel. Okay, we are going to grab a little paintbrush, pointed if you got. Doesn't have to be. If you want it to be very small, it can be like small, small, whatever works. Okay. 
And we're going to do our good... Oh, sorry, Dan. Womp womp. <laughs> yeah. oh. We'll tell him sorry. Um, okay, we have our little brush. We're going to go down our water. Now that I have this screen when it's long ways, you can see me going into my water dish here. All right, and I'm going to scoop water onto my palette. See, you can hardly see it, but scooping water on there. And then we're going to take tiny touches of the green, go into the pile of water. And mix up that baby, right? Until we get that chocolate milky consistency over here of more water than paint. Just little touches of paint. And the reason that we're doing this is because this is our base sketch, right? The pencilers are just penciling. So they don't have to worry about this stage. It's okay if you took green out because you're going to use it at some point. Um, we got this water down so that it's just our rough sketch. So it dries really light. Like it can dry lighter than what it's going to look like on my screen. Cause I just make it a bit darker for you guys to see it. Right. Okay. You're not supposed to dip your pencil in water. Hey, you can if you want. Nothing wrong with that. Okay. So we are going to look at our whole canvas, right? We're going to look at the picture underneath us and try to picture where we're going to put that big old head. And imagine, right, we're going to want his bandana, I don't know, like face bandana, maybe, um, over across. What should I, is that, what is it called? There's probably a name for it. Imagine where that's going to go, right? We roughly want his head in the middle. It's kind of painterly mask. <laughs> Yeah, it's a mask. It's a mask. It's a mask. You're right. Sorry, for the last year, mask has just, like, when I think of mask, I just think of mask that goes over my mouth. But you're right. It's, it's a mask. Illum, instructions unclear. Dipped MacBook in water. Don't. I have a little warning about that under there. Okay. Okay. Sorry, guys. I'm already astray. So we've got our chocolate milk consistency. We're imagining where this head's going to go. We're looking at this little drawing up here and what it's going to be... And we're just gonna start by drawing a circle, okay? Not too high, not too low, basically right in the middle. Who are we kidding? And remember, it is borderline impossible to draw a circle perfect right off the bat, okay? I'll make mine a little darker so it's easier for you to see. So I'm going around a couple times, see how it's like wilding out. There's a couple lines, it's okay. I'm not worried. That's good enough, because it's just our underdrawing, right? Base painting, if you want. Um, okay. Easy, right? Got a circle. And now for this next part, we're going to imagine, like, if this is direct, like, directly right across, cut the circle in half. We're going to want it to be on a little bit of an angle. See what I did there? This is centered. This is at a bit of an angle. You can even, if it'll help, draw a line at that angle. It's a little bit over half, I guess, but. From there, we're gonna draw a big old bean, okay? And that lines are helping us. We're just gonna bring it over. See, I'm going over top the circle. And we're gonna come all the way down. Maybe it doesn't have to be as big on this side. Like maybe, see how I went a little far? Maybe let's come a little bit closer to that circle. And see how it's on an angle? If it was straight across, it would have been like this, but we put it on a little bit of an angle, right? And like I, like I said, I think I went a little bit too far, um, too far, too over the edge here. You can, with a wet rag, like dip your rag in the water and you can, if it hasn't dried yet, like literally like erase, only if you're working on canvas, don't do this on paper. See how I can like almost erase my work. This dried a little too much, so I'll have to paint white over top of that. But that stuff that was still wet, like I can almost just erase it with a rag and water. Cowabunga, dude. Hello, Kenzie. How you doing? 
Fun fact, actually, just from that, um, my first email ever was cow underscore uh underscore bunga underscore dude underscore one at hotmail.com. Just so you know. Just so you know. Okay, so we've got our bean in our circle, and that is the start of our guy. Our ninja turtle has begun, okay? Cutie. And see how it goes further over on the left side and closer on the inside. Right side. This is perspective, but I don't like, we can't get into teaching perspective in an ad, one and a half hour class, okay? So I just kind of cheat sheet, treat you, teach you perspective. And if it's something that you're interested in, um, you can, there's so many videos on YouTube to get more into that world. Cause I had many tears in art school learning how to draw perspective. <laughs> okay. All right. So the turtle's coming together. We've got most of the shapes of his head. It's easy peasy already. Okay. And from that neck, we are going to imagine like we're following this circle that we already did. All the shapes we're doing help us align everything we need, okay? So we're gonna come underneath and we're gonna make a line straight down. See how I kind of copied that circle and I just basically drew right off of it? Catch Tatesky 101 Fall 2021. <laughs> oh my gosh. I don't, I don't, not yet. Like and subscribe to Tay for more perspective recipes. <laughs> if you want to cry. I had a teacher that you had to draw a perfect one by one inch cube without using rulers. It was really hard. His name was Ken. Yeah, he was right. He was right. Okay, so we've got that line down there. And we're going to come around on this edge and just kind of finish off that T. See how I'm roughly following that circle, but not as closely. If it helps you to draw that line there, you can. You made your circle too big, but you're trusting the process. Okay, okay. Um, that's how big we talk in. Like, is there not much space above or not much space below? Don't worry. You, I'm glad you're trusting the process, even though you put a sad face after that. Not a lot of space below. Okay, well, you can basically just move all these shapes up a little bit more. Um, and then Cinderella feels like theirs is too high. Okay, so like imagine that your circle's too big and we'll start with it being too close to the bottom. Like realistically, you can bring the shape higher up and then the triangles will be inside your bigger circle, right? And you'll just have to build around that. Does that kind of make sense? I know it looks different, but like imagine that this circle, you're just painting inside of it because your circle's too big. And then Cinderella is saying that yours is too high. And remember you guys, white is, um, what do you call it? <laughs> White is your life saver, okay? So for you, Cinderella, if yours was like, oh yeah, a little bit, I am like Goldilocks. No, you're right, I am like Goldilocks. Like, and it was too big, or no, too warm. And it was just right, right? Is that what you're talking about? <laughs> okay, so if yours was too close to the top, you are going to bring your circle down a little bit more. And the beauty is we're going to fill that in with the, like his mask. <laughs> I almost called it a ribbon again. But you know, oh, you can't even see what I'm talking about. See, if your circle is too big, you're going to redraw your circle closer inside the sides that you want, Cinderella. And then you'll imagine that this darker green is purple. We're going to basically be coloring that in, right? With where his mask will be. If we just roughly draw where the mask is going to be. Oh my gosh, I was just about to say, go, go, Power Rangers. <laughs> That's not the right thing. Does that kind of make sense? He's going to be in here. 
Here's his mouth. Does that kind of make sense? Or are you guys just looking at nothing and you're like, this looks like a scribble. Eyeball would be here. Eyeball would be here. Anyway. <laughs> I hope that helps. Um, okay, as it... Yeah, you guys, who is the character that goes in... What was it? A character that goes in and to the bear's house and she eats all the porridge and one's too hot and one's too cold and one's just right. It's Goldilocks, right? I think it's Goldilocks. Yes. Nice. Oh, Vienna and Chase. You're coming to paint? You guys, these are our Australian friends. Hi, guys. Circle bean triangle. How's that? <laughs> Oh my gosh. Well, that's exciting. Okay, you guys. Welcome. I'm on tangents today, left, right, and center, so I apologize in advance for everybody. Um, but so far, we've got a Ninja Turtle, and I think we've closely solved, closely, we have solved a couple issues if your circle's too close to the top or if your circle's too close to the bottom. Our guest just stayed too long, so we're running late, but we'll catch up. Hey, no worries, no worries. No worries. I'll go a little slow. And then Lisa saying, Hey Tay, hard to believe that the turtles have been popular for over 30 years. Right? It is very impressive. You gotta love these things that just last forever. Um, okay. We're gonna keep doing a couple little lines. Just like Pokemon. Like, how old's Pokemon? Or like Mario. How old's that? Okay. Let's just continue along here, right? We've got that triangle, and we're gonna come just a little bit over beside it and just kind of be parallel to that line. We can still be using that chocolate milk consistency. Sorry if it's dried up because I'm just gabbing along here, but we've got a line right beside, and we're building these like neck muscle lines, right? I'm painting this really crooked, but that's okay. And same on this side, right under this little cheeky of his. We're going to do another one just parallel. Boop. I rage quit Pokemon as a child when I couldn't find Mew. Have you? Did you pick it up as an adult with Pokemon Go and then get Mew? Because that would be a full circle moment. It happened for me. I caught them all. I love I caught them all. I made a Ninja Turtle B-Day cake for a friend's son 32 years ago. Love it. You have, the nostalgia is real. All right. From this neckline, we're going to come a little ways down, like an inch, and we're going to start basically doing another triangle. See that? We made one line out from his neck. Triangle. Let me know, V and Chase, if you need some more time. This is where I'm asking you to trust the process, right? Because it's going to look a little wonky and crazy. Like, what is happening? Your boyfriend's obsessed. TNT, house coat, jacket, shirts, toys, PS4, skin. So we're going to paint this for him. Yes. Okay, beautiful. So we've got the line down the neck. And now let's go above here. And let's just paint another. Like, we're basically just building triangles almost, but we're just making his beefy neck. Okay? And guess what? One more line. Boop! Right? Check that out. I did mine pretty big, too. It's not going to have as big of a color swoop like the picture, but we're just living and learning. Okay. So what do we got now? We want to do his little schnoz. We're just kind of aligning where that's going to go. And if we look at our reference photo, it is a part, a circle basically right inside of his nose here. Should we do it? Actually, we're just going to go above this bean, our original bean. And we're going to come a little bit more to the right. Because if we imagine the middle of this, maybe let's do that. If this is the middle of the circle, we're coming a little bit over to the right. Right? And on an angle. 
Do you see what I mean? If this is a center, we're coming a little to the right and on an angle. And I'll just draw a line here. You don't have to draw this line if you don't want to. This is just to help you visualize what we are using as the center point of his little face. Again, optional line. You don't got to do it if you don't want to. But acknowledge that, see, if this was straight, it's a little bit to the side. And we're just going to draw a bump that goes into the center of this, okay? So if I start over here, I'm going to bring this bump on up and bring it on down. Okay, there's still shape on this side. There's still shape on that side, but we've got the little bump that's going to help us make his schnoz, right? If you imagine a circle there, do you see that bump? And then one more line that, again, might feel weird if we don't understand perspective, but to give it our the cheap runaround, <laughs> the free version. Um, so when we're looking at him, we can kind of see under his chin, right? We're seeing underneath it. So we're following the same line. We went a bump like this for the bump of his nose, but underneath his nose is also going to be in that angle. So we're starting with our little triangle down here. And same thing, we're bumping on up, right? We're mocking the line up there. We're bumping on up and we're coming on down. Basically in that triangle that we've built down at the bottom here, right? Whoop. We've got a bump on the top and a bump on the bottom. And I think that means we're just about ready. Like, see, this is a drip. That doesn't have to be there. It's fine if it is. But do you see them coming together? And like slowly as we start building stuff up, like you'll see that we can continue this line we have here into this. You were about to ask about that little drip. <laughs> My apologies. Let's see how these shapes start coming together. Right? We're going to paint away all those lines, which is fine. You're going to ask what angle? Oh, me. <laughs> Just made up angles. Just make stuff up here. So <laughs> okay. And then let's just roughly lay out where this purple's gonna go. His eyeballs take up most of the top of this headpiece. So we are gonna stop. Remember, always look at our reference photo so that you can kind of understand like where I'm coming from and why I'm making some of the decisions to show you with shapes, right? So his first big eyeball in his mask here, we're gonna bump up and come on down. Like an eyebrow, like let's just give him a big old eyebrow. Okay. And bring the line across right over his nose, right? And exactly like in the picture. And then same thing, we're gonna bring this line up and over. Bring it on down like a little bump over top his head. And again, this is all just, I'm, I'm putting it on pretty dark. Like you guys can still be using that chocolate milky consistency, right? I just want you to be able to see it good on the camera. But see, we're just doing a little J to bring that mask on. And realistically, like we have a Ninja Turtle, folks. Do you see him? And depending on how you want, like you can bring this line down if you want to add more purple, if you think his face is too chubby. Like remember, you always can be tweaking and editing it. And when things dry, you can take out your white paint and we can fix some angles. But so far, we are very close to getting a Ninja Turtle going, okay? Now is your time. Oops, I just punched the microphone. Sorry if that was loud. Now is your time to choose what color. Who are you painting? Which Ninja Turtle 
If you're acid, you're going to paint it whatever color you want, which is, I love that. Make your own Ninja Turtle. I'm probably going to make mine pink at the end, but I'll do it purple for now. And I'll obviously add some pink in there because that just makes sense, doesn't it? You're going to do Donatello. Perfect. We've got Donatello. We've got a personal one. Does anyone have like a fave? Da Vinci? I'm just kidding. Just some TikTok references, sorry. Um, wait, what's... I don't know their colors well. I don't know, like, orange. Also considering Leonardo, all four! <laughs> da Vinci? Um, Michelangelo's orange. Raphael. I love that they're just art history. Donatello's purple, Michelangelo's orange. There we go. Leonardo's blue. There you go. Look. Raphael's red and Leonardo's blue. You guys. Justin can catch up if you start now. I think you can. So you're going to take out your color. Whatever color that may be. Any color of the rainbow. We don't care about things being exact here. Okay? So you're going to take out the color you want. I'm also, just to try to stay kind of true to the picture that, to Alfonso's work here, I'm going to grab some yellow. Um, and you can use yellow, like if you're doing red, you can use yellow too. Um, green, yellow, oh no, they don't, none of them have green. Um, blue, I would probably just use white. But do you see if I look at our reference photo below us here how... His mask is the dark purple, but the color in the background is a little bit different. Like it has a little touch of another color in it, right? We are going to be adding some yellow into our green while we do some highlights. So the yellow works with our purple now. Acid has a question. Please go ahead. And Justin, please. I hope you do paint it. If I want a lighter color mask, yes. I'm just getting my paintbrush wet. Um, so we're painting the background first. We're going to paint this stri stripe of color first. Um, and if you want a lighter mask, I would probably, no, I would probably still go now. Like you're still going to have to be conscious of your paint, like no matter what, if you paint it first or last, um, maybe now because it would be, maybe now, I think now, and you have white, right? If you're using acrylic paint, it's always important to have white, and you can really paint any layer at any time, to be honest. White will... Okay, yeah. Okay, cool. Cool, cool, cool. So, what we are about to do is just messily painting. I just like this look here. You don't have to. Like, you can paint in the whole background, but I like how he did this strip of color behind him that's kind of, like, fragmented at the end. I think that's cool. Um, so, I'm going to have the color I'm using, a touch of yellow... And a touch of white on my palette. Boop. And I'm going to get a bigger paintbrush out. Help you choose what color or like when to do it. I think you should do it now too. Do it now. Oh, pink, gold, or silver. Like I'm biased to pink personally. Does anyone else want to vote on what color they use? What you thinking? Gold is kind of cool. Yeah, look. Oh, we've got a couple golds, right? As I said, gold too. So we're all thinking gold's pretty majestic. So I'm going to start by taking the main color that we're making that mask, okay? But most of us are going to want the mask to be right out of the tube color. So we're going to add just a touch of white to whatever our background color is going to be. I have some water on my brush that helps me like pull this around. Right. And we're going to get a lot of water on it first because like right now we just want to roughly plan. If you're a paint, a penciler, you can just pencil a line in if you want. I personally like the look of like a rough painted on edge. Not surprising. Um, so I'm literally just gonna with that purple with a touch of white and a bunch of water on my brush, 
I'm going to decide where I want those streaks of color to go. And I'm just going to roughly decide here. If you are someone that likes to use rulers, you can use a ruler if you want. And here is where that pop of color is going to go. Okay? And we're going to add a little more paint on our brush now. We don't want it to be super watery. A little bit, but not as watery as we had before. And we're going to start by, like, coming close to but not touching. Oh, I touched it. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> our turtle. This happens all the time. My purple looks very blue on the camera to you guys, but it's very purple here. I don't really know why how or how to change that. But... We are going to, it's rough, like it doesn't matter if we put this on roughly, like going in crazy directions. Oh look, I just went over the edge that I made. And that's fine. I'm just going to go in with some watery paint, bring the line down a little more. I'm okay if it drips a little because I'm a messy painter, you guys know me. And I'm just going back in and dipping with some white onto the brush, putting some more purple, just so I get a little bit different variety of, let's see, it's kind of reflecting weird, of different values. Justin, are you painting? I hope you are. Right, and it's messy. I'm not coming to the edge. You can if you want. I like when you have these like crazy brush strokes. And I'm also going to add a tiny touch of yellow onto my brush to bring into the color a little bit. It doesn't look great on the camera. Couldn't answer, painting, cool. Okay, good, that was my question. Are you painting? So I'm good. The camera's not picking up this one very nicely. You can play with color. Maybe you want to put a little bit of red in your purple background or in whatever color background you're using. We just want to try to make the background a little bit different color than the pure purple that we are making or the pure orange, pure whatever color you decide. Do, do, do. It's okay if you touch the line of your Ninja Turtle because he's just a rough outline right now, right? Like we haven't even painted him in. That's why it's kind of a good thing that we're doing this outline right now. We're just flailing some color around. See how it dripped? That's cool. I think that's cool. You can go in with darker purple if you want to bring in some darker spots. Remember how sometimes I teach you guys to look at the reference photo and squint at it and you can really see where the darkest values of the piece are. And that's always a good reference point to bring into your painting. But see how it's like messy, right? I'm just, oh, oops, that's fine. I'm just, uh, I like the texture. I like the colors kind of weirdly blending together. I think it looks cool. And when we come to this side, we want right by the head, right here on the right hand side of his head, we're going to add a little bit more white than the other one area. We want it to be the lightest in this place. It's a good place point of reference to see where our light source is coming from. So first I'm going to add a lot of white in there. See, we can see the value. It's the darkest here and it got lighter over here. You can keep dipping your paintbrush in water to help move that paint around, right? And again, I'm going to nice bring it nice and messily brush strokes to the edge. You can play with dry brushing, etc., etc. The yellow I chose I really don't like, but we'll try again. We'll see. And in that one spot where we put a lot of the white, we're going to want to try to bring that third color that we're bringing into there, right? If we brought yellow like mine, we can add a little touches of the yellow in this highlighted spot. Again, if your colors don't mix the same or if something isn't working well, you don't have to copy exactly what I'm doing, but let me know if I need to help in a different way. 
but by putting the lighter color and the darker values on here, we're establishing a light source. If the colors that you're using aren't mixing well together, make sure they're dry completely before you try to go over top of them again. I'm just gonna try a different yellow. I don't know why that one looked like that. Ow, I just sat on my ankle weird. What's too late? Your colors are mixing weird? Don't give me those cry eyes. Okay, well then that's okay. What? Let's leave them be for now. Let them dry. And what colors were you mixing that didn't look good? Maybe we can pick a different one, but it's not ruined, okay? Gold touched the green. Oh, that's okay. For sure, just chill for a sec. Blow dry it even maybe if you want. That's a good tip for everybody else though. Something to, sorry that we have to use your stress as an example, I said, but um, you want to kind of be careful of colors that you don't want to mix together. Be careful and try to make sure that they're dry. When something's dry, you won't have that problem, but sometimes most of it seems dry and then it sneaks up in you and it blends a little icky. And all you gotta do is just wait for it to dry and go back over with gold. If the gold won't go over the green by itself, you might have to um, paint over it in white and start that little spot over again and that's okay. See how we've made some, it's lighter with that yellowy color here. It gets darker purple in the back. How's that happening or working for people? I never know if I'm teaching something awkward and you guys are just at home like, what is going on? <laughs> you can keep adding that. Again, I always teach or not teach, try to stress that different levels of painters can take different parts as far as they want, right? Like if you want to add some more color, like maybe you want to go in with orange and do that same kind of fanning, brushing out technique, totally cool. If you are somebody who that one layer stressed you out and it's going to take you a lot longer, then don't worry about that. Um, keep it as simple as you want. You don't even have to add that yellow color in if you don't like it. but you can pick, pick, pick away at as long as you want, but be conscious of where wet paint is. Some colors, maybe something's like mixing really ugly and mucky for you. You might want to just give it a couple minutes so it dries completely because if anything is still wet, there's no point in trying. You'll just keep working it and working it. All right, again, remember, we don't copy our references exact, exact. We're just using it as a reference point. Let's see how it's all brushy. Use your paper towel or your rag or whatever you're using as you go through to wipe off some of that excess paint, maybe. If there's too much purple and it's mixing in with your yellow, make sure you use your rag as a tool as well. Right, his shell got to fit in there somewhere. That's okay. Okay. How we like them apples. Was that a okay process? Just looking for some validation over here. How are we feeling? Should we let that chill for a little bit? Keep working on that. We are going to splatter white paint on there before we get to our um, painting the green of our turtle because we don't want the splatter to be on the turtle. We just want it to be on the background. 
But to do that, we're going to want the background to be dry, okay? We can splatter some purple, though. Like, maybe that will be fun. Or, again, whatever your mask color is going to be. We will be talking about splatter for a bit, so I'll reteach this a couple times if you're still painting and messing with that background texture and color. So to make splatter, it's the same old deal as that chocolate milky consistency as we were doing before. You're scooping water from the water dish. You are making that concoction, okay? You can tap a couple times onto your water dish, but you want it to be able to form a bead. Do you see how that bead formed and dropped pretty quickly? That's a good consistency of paint. And you can tap it. Like I said, tapping it helps a little bit. And you can go hangs loose away from your painting and just flick the brush. And see how it's getting in all these parts that we wouldn't... Oh, maybe you can't even really see it. You kind of see there. It's getting in parts that we wouldn't really, like if we painted all that already, that would be really annoying to get that splatter in there, right? But it doesn't matter that we haven't painted it yet. You can splatter as much as you want. On the bottom too, if you want. Remember, there's also ways like to make big, big splatters is by holding your painting flat and same using that same consistency of paint and water. But you're going to hold your paintbrush to make that bead, right? To make those drops, you can even like whatever, force it if you want to. Let's see that bead drop. Always have your wet rag or wet paper towel because you can if you want like Sap up, sap up, soak up a drop or a splatter if you want. I'm just going to put a couple of these in there. The problem is, and why I don't teach this often, is because then we need to leave the painting flat. And I have it set up that, like, it's that's hard to, for you guys to see, right? I don't really have the paint, the camera or anything set up for it to dry flat like this. But if you're working flat, that's perfect, right? Just hold it like this for a little bit, like this, so you can kind of see the shapes. I'm just gonna suck up some of those things. Because if I hold this up, there's so much water in those drips that they will drip down, which I guess isn't the end of the world either. Try to soak it up. Sometimes you can like soak up the access with a dry brush so that they don't drip too much. I realize that this isn't help when you're trying to look at what you're painting and I'm just holding it flat on the ground, but we're going for it. Oh, most of them are staying still. Okay, cool. But again, see like this line isn't straight, whatever. <laughs> Some of the splatter's crazy. Eh. It's dripped a little bit. Who cares? It's fine. So, how are we feeling? I think I want to bring a little bit more purple over here just because I'm picky. So if we need to teach that, well not if we need, I will teach that splatter again because we are going to do it with white, very consist, like heavily concentrated on this side. We're all cut up and fall along. The Australians are power painters already. Love it. Perfect. I was just thinking about you. Loving doing it live. Yes. I love how it can work. Like what time is it for you right now? Well, it's tomorrow, first of all. It's Friday, right? I imagine. I am allergic to the paint. 12.30 p.m. Friday. Like, what? That's so crazy. And it is 
eight fifty nine PM Thursday for us. <laughs> Love that. Love that. For me. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Not for us. Yeah, for me. Right. It is an hour earlier for you. For you. You're right, Justin. Sorry. I'm just assuming for everyone. Okay. <laughs> How's that looking? Are we ready to do some white splatter? Maybe. Justin's here too, yeah. Kenzie should, well Kenzie was, but Kenzie also has a lot of work on her plate, so she might have her hands full at the moment. Justin's stressed but trusting the process. Are you, I'm assuming you're digitally painting, correct? There's some techniques that I feel like would be hard to translate digital. Yeah, so that's fair, that's harder to do some of these like painty things like that. Okay, we're gonna splatter some white, which Justin should be easy. You have a button, you have a, a paintbrush that's splatter. Right? Okay. Let's do it. And two, like splatter something that's fun for you to like explore different sized brushes. What happens if you add more water and less water? I do suggest practicing on a piece of paper right beside if you're somebody like Acid or Justin who are stressed, who's not listening to rule number three of not treating your painting too precious. Okay. <laughs> um, uh, what was I going to say? You can practice on a piece of paper if you want. Remember, you might need to use some protection on the areas around you. Newspaper on the walls, table... If you're using acrylic paint, it comes off with like hard surfaces, easy peasy, but. I hope I did you justice, but I just finished the Oz picture. Getting called out, sorry, <laughs> it's a It's a safe space, you guys, we're in a safe space. But Justin, I need to see, I can't wait, that's exciting. He splattered, slobbed, and trusted the process. It's all I could ever ask for. Okay, I'm uh, splattering some white paint on here, okay? And like I said, I want it to be pretty concentrated to this right-hand side here. But it doesn't have to be. Let me zoom in here. Oh, that's not what we're looking at. We're looking over here. Like, do you want me to add some color is what you're saying? Because I can do that. Some of you also, I guess I probably should have said before, maybe I just want you all to try it this way first, but you don't have to flick the paintbrush and get messy like me. You don't have to. Some people do this where they like tap. Oh, well, that kind of works. Just the splatter's smaller. Um, you can pull back the paintbrush, which is also messy too, but that's fun. I just encourage you to explore some other options. <laughs> and again, I'm just gonna splatter most of it in this area. Maybe a couple back here, I don't know. Oh, you guys can't even see it. This is Zoom business. But again, have fun with the splatter part. I think it's the best. That's like how I found my style is like throwing paint around and seeing what happens. My hubby hates when I experiment with splatter. <laughs> sorry. sorry, not sorry, husband. I know, I, and he's not the only one. I'm sure that there are many people that are like, Taylor, thanks for teaching my children how to throw paint all over the walls, basically. It's not what I mean to do. Um, it just sometimes happens. But nothing wrong with a little bit of paint in your life, right? Right? And remember, you can keep doing like this too. Like you can do these drippies. The add some water to the paint, go like this and let it come on. Drip. That just got mixed in with white, but that's okay. 
I mean purple because that is white. Like we're just making some texture and making some cool things, okay? Okay, so it's nine already as well. Move it or lose it, Taylor. Move it or lose it. More of us need to be like ten. Okay, not. You're not wrong. But he would also probably say, more wives need to not have paint all over our lives. <laughs> He's patient. But he doesn't like splatter either. <laughs> Soon enough, my studio won't be in our home and the glitter will be locked somewhere else, right? And then we'll get some, like here, we can even paint some if you want. Like, paint some white circles in there. Lisa, he is cool. You guys need to hang out, actually. We've got to get the two of you together, too. Okay. I don't know. I'm just making texture. You can even, like, if we're talking texture sake, again, experimental things you don't have to do just if somebody out there wants to try. Like, you can slob on some wet paint, right? Oh, that was a little big. That's okay. And with, like, a very dry, crunchy brush, if you want, you can, like, pull some of that across to make some different types of textures. We'll meet down one day soon. Hope when Justin's back. Yes, of course. Of course. And acid, I pump my marker and let it drip across the page. Okay. Look at you, freestyling queen. So do you mean you, like, pressed it hard and let it, like, drip down or something? Because that's pretty cool. See, look at that cool texture with a dry brush over top. Again, this is like prime example of trusting the process because right now all we're looking at is these messy whatevers. But this is really supposed to just be the background, right? Like our focal point is going to be this turtle on top. But right now that all we're looking at is the background, I'm sure some of you are like panicking that the splatter looks weird or it's really messy or ugly. But... Once we get our turtle in the focal point and this big old mask whipping across, you're going to be laughing. I'm getting carried away because this is my favorite part of any painting is just like throwing stuff around. So how about that? Okay. How do we feel? Do you want me to zoom in of what that looks like close? Trust the process. Exactly, Lisa. Exactly. She's crazy, but we like it. Right? I think it's looking pretty good. Okay. Should we paint their mask first or last? Probably last. We are going to get to the green. So I'll give you guys a minute or two to just kind of wrap up some of that texture and tings you're doing in the background. Um, you can also not stress if you don't feel like it's done yet because the parts that are left uh, visible once we're done, this part you can touch up at the end if you want. Keep working on it. We just try to get the drawing and everything in in the uh, two hours, and then you can work on that baby as long as you want, right? Okay, we're going to take that green out again, and we're going to make sure we have yellow and white on our palette. Remember, if you don't have green, you will, you, yes, if you don't have green, you'll mix blue and yellow together, okay? Maybe a little bit of white. Love the splatter part of the painting. Chase was just like, ooh, that's a good splatter. <laughs> yes, Jay. You guys, I love when you enjoy the parts of the painting that I like, too. That's, like, what made me fall in love with painting, is, like, letting paint drip around and splatter around and see what happens and what it looks like at the end. It's the best part. 
All right, so do we got some green on our brushes, palettes? You can say brush too. Um, the brush that you'll be using to fill in. As it says, let's move on because you're going overboard. Yeah, that's understandable too. It's easy to do that as well. We are going to um, start filling him in. And the color of, the color, the size of brush that you use really depends on the size of your canvas and turtle. I'm probably going to use like a square brush about this size. You can use like pointed ones still too, like really up to preference of what you want. Some of you might need like a really big brush. Some of you might need a smaller one. I assume Nico probably needs a small one because yours are usually on those smaller little palettes and I don't know how you do it. I can't paint small. <laughs> Schlaub it. Um, I'm using the same green that we used before. Yes, again, up to you, but I'm gonna use the same one. And we're gonna start by just getting our paintbrush wet and just not like our chocolate milk consistency or any of us. Um, Cinderella, thanks for coming in. Um, you're the best. Some of you might need to clean your water. Like, sh like me, she said. <laughs> Um, very great suggestion. I forget that all the time. Your water might be very purpley, very blue, very whatever that you just did. And that will really affect your paint color. So go and change up that color quick, not color, water quick, um, to keep some nice fresh colors going on to your canvas. But we're going to go ahead right away and just start slobbing some color on. Okay. And at first, First, it's pretty thick. We're not worrying about, we don't want it to be that chocolate milk consistency, okay? We can let it be brush strokey at the bottom. I'm going to. And remember how we squint. It's schlobbing time, exactly. Big chunks of paint. And we're gonna squint at our piece and see where all these dark, right? The dark squares are, the dark parts of the picture are. So we're going like right under his chin, right? Right in that little whoop, uh, triangle that we drew earlier. Maybe we'll color in this triangle at the bottom. And it's a little bit messy, it's okay. It doesn't have to be perfect. And down here, he's got like a little pocket, but we're just building up our turtle. If we add a little water to our brush, there might be some drippies at the bottom. Some of you might like that. Okay, and we're gonna come onto his little head up here and just kind of fill that in. And while we fill in that little noggin at the top there, you see how in our picture and exactly how we are starting to prep it out, right? The yellow and the lighter spots here. So the same as on our whole shape, on our whole turtle, the lighter spot should be on the right hand side. So even with a painty brush, like I still got green in there. I'm going to take a little touch of white on the tip of my brush there. You can see it. And I'm going to come into that wet paint and just kind of follow along that top part of his forehead there, just to lighten up that side of his head. Maybe I'll zoom in. See there? How it's lighter on this side. And you can even add a touch of yellow. Again, it might be a little touchy. You might need to wipe your brush off, but we're gonna add a little touch of yellow into that color. You can't even see it on camera, that's annoying. All right, and add some yellow into that paint. And since it's wet, it should just blend in together a little bit. If it's not, that means we just have to go back in with some green again just so you can see the picture. But see, subtle, it's subtly a little, little bit of that yellow lighter color. Worst comes to worst, we can put some black in our green and darken up the spots if you need to. But that can come last, okay? Right now we're just subtly putting out some lighter color on the edge. And same on down here, like in these spots. These are going to be kind of dry, and that's okay. We wanted those ones to dry a little bit. First, we're going in with a little bit of white to our green just to define some of these shapes where we didn't put paint already. Whoop. Whoop. 
And same thing, we want to get some yellow in those lighter spots. Oh my gosh, I just realized I'm not listening to music. I hope you guys are. So I'm getting my paintbrush wet. We've got yellow on our brush and we're going into those spots to just add some more highlights of yellow to show where the sun's coming from, where the light reflection's coming from. And remember, nothing's permanent. Like if you're looking at our picture and thinking that maybe this line that you did under the chin needs to like thin out a little bit more, you can go in with your dark green and you can do that. Nothing's permanent. Always look at your reference photo and try to see where you can change or tweak things to make it look like the picture. Because that's what I'm always doing. All right, a little dark spot in the corner. But really that last layer of just like black thick outline is really gonna make a difference. Have a great night off to bed and love the Ninja Turtles, but far, oh my gosh, how do I say your name? Far Gassier. Thanks. Love the Ninja Turtles too. Good night. Thanks for hanging out with us. All right, we're still going through and we're doing the same old, same old. We're going to get some white to our green just to lighten it up a little bit. We're going to come on down this spot that we left lighter color, left white, right? And then go into that yellow. Maybe you need a little bit of water on your brush, but the paint's all wet, so it should start blending in nicely together. And just toss a little bit of yellow into that neck muscle, right? Perfect. And with that yellow and green kind of still on your brush from before, he's got a little neck, what is it called? It's an Adam's apple. Let's just make, oh, that's very bright. So that's a little more yellow than I would like it to be, but I'm going in there and just adding this little half circle and with, see, I'm going to wipe my brush off completely, dip it in water and come to that edge and you can kind of buff out those dark, crazy lines a little bit. Okay. But you're right, Cinderella, he did not miss neck day. He did net. How are we seeing that all come together? Do, do, do. I just have to send something quick while you make that big old neck. And again, too, with a little bit of white and green on your brush, like you see that he has a little, oh wow, messing everything up. We can lay it up a tiny touch under that neck. But again, that's detail wise. We don't, with some outlines, we're gonna play around with that. It's not gonna be a big stressor. Okay. And let's come on up to that back part of his neck. We've got a little bit of yellow and a little bit of green and a little bit of white on our brush. Okay. And let's just, again, fill in those spots. Oh, that's pretty yellow. Fill in the spots. This is Donatello. Yours is looking like Ed from 90 Day Fiance. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. That's hilarious, first of all. But is that not what he's looking like, too? I feel like... <laughs> Everyone's dying at Ed. <laughs> Best comment ever. I feel like that's like what we're basically, that's like what we're going for. Are we not? Look at this, but he's the same. I'm really excited to see yours, but <laughs> let me know if I can help in any way, shape, or form. But I don't let it, I feel like that's basically what we're doing here. I think this is quite Ed-ish. 
a good one. And remember when stuff dries, if something dries a little darker than you want and it's dry, now you can go back over with some more yellow if you want to bump that up a little bit. Justin says his is part Shrek, a little frog, a little Ross from Monsters, Inc. You mean me on Halloween? I'm always watching, Mike. Belowski. <laughs> okay, we've got it coming together, right? Now, before we paint that good old mouth of ours, we're going to want to lay out where his teeth are going to go, just in case some of your white paint is not strong enough to go over top of the green. And then I just don't want you to be annoyed that you can't even draw a mouth, right? So, it might help some of you, pencil, use a pencil if that's more comfortable for you. I'll use a brush. I'm going to use it with some green. And again, just like at the start, just to really water down. This is just a rough sketch, okay? We're going to come over and we can use this circle, right? We can still see the original circle under here that we used to do our little guy's face, right? We're going to come a little bit beside that. And we're gonna just draw a line. Maybe, let me look at the picture closer before. Yep, that's right. We're gonna draw a line. See, it's a touch over from the original circle that we drew. We're gonna draw a little line going up towards the circle. And on this side, a little line going down towards the circle, see that? Up towards, down towards. Uh, and then we're gonna come to the other side. I'm like, how should I teach you this? Same thing, we're gonna make a little bit line, but it's gonna be a little bit shorter because this is again going on about our perspective. Um, me not teaching you the real actual truth of perspective in just a cheating ways. It's bigger on this side and we're gonna come farther away. It's gonna be shorter on this side, okay? And same thing, we're gonna go up and this side's also gonna go up. So we've got two little like rectangles on the sides, right? Now, we basically just have to bring this line straight across. We'll start down here. We're gonna raise it a little ways up and come on all the way down to that little line. This line can be played with a little bit, but all the way down and you're matching up with that line we did on the other side. This might be a little complex for some, so I'll try to keep repeating and go as slow as possible. Okay. You can still use that watered down paint. You can still be using a paper, uh, pencil, whatever. Same on this side. We're going to come on down almost to about where this line comes up and just straight, oops. Or here and just straight on down to match up with that other line. And the beauty of this now is that we've got the line set and we can bring that line in more. Like if we want his teeth to be smaller, right? You can bring this line in a little bit closer to make his teeth part a little smaller. But we've got a mouth roughly where the teeth are going to go. And remember, the reason we do that, realistically, if you have a really good quality paint, we could have just painted this whole thing green and just gone in with white on top. But some of you might not have that um, quality of paint. So we're planning ahead, okay? So now we're gonna go back to that little bit of a bigger paintbrush we were using to paint in everything else we were doing here. What was I using? I think I was using a square one or something. I don't know, medium sized brush. And we're going to go back to the dark green. And we want more paint than water. We don't want chocolate milky. We want thick with two C's. Uh, uh, uh. Let me see here. Okay. And let's start on the back side of his mouth. We're just gonna fill this in. 
right? Fill in that big old cheek with the dark green. And remember, like, maybe we can make this a little wider if you want. But first, we're just going to fill in this back side. Cinderella, that's literally, that's obviously exactly what was going through my head. <laughs> you going to take that dark paint? A la pobre. <laughs> okay, right, we've got that cheek coming in there. We've got a dark green, and that's okay, because the lighter is on the right-hand side, right? Like, we've been doing this whole time. So, we're first gonna, with a little bit of water on our brush, pull that paint across. Remember, you can adjust that nose. Like, if you feel like your nose looks a little too thin, you can make it wider on this stage. And while that paint's wet, maybe we'll just go to about there. With the wet paint, we're going to do the same old. We're going to dip our brush in white and lighten up some of these spots that we want, like this side of his nose. Maybe I'll go zoomy, zoomy. Right, you can bring it right on down. Let's put a white streaky. And then like we've been doing the whole time, putting our paintbrush in the yellow with a little bit of water on our brush and you can bring that yellow through that white paint, white wet paint is actually what I meant to say, but both work. And you can pull it across. Remember if some lines are coming up really thick um, and your edges are thick, you can always clean off your brush and use only water. I'll try here in a second. Let's, for example, like I put this yellow chunk there and it's a little bit too thick of an edge for me. I'm going to wipe off my paintbrush with my rag, get it nice and clean. And go right in with just water on my brush and just kind of buff out that baby on the side. Again, that might be a little bit more of like an advanced technique for some. So don't stress if that takes you a couple times to get that down. Um, or don't try it at all if that stresses you out. It's fine. Not something you have to do. Alright, you can lighten that up if you want. Right now it just all of a sudden says that I lost all my viewers. Are you guys still here? <laughs> it says that there's zero people in here, but I feel like I would have got a memo if you couldn't see what's happening. Weird! It literally says zero, and all you guys are saying here. Well, that's a flaw. That's okay. Glad to know that you're still here. Not here, says Ilum. <laughs> okay. We're going to go to the bottom of that chin, and we're basically going to do the same thing, right? With thick paint. Kind of try to be conscious of this jawline here. We don't really want to lose it. Paging Hey Max Brown. <laughs> Honestly, I have no idea who's in here. It says you're all gone. But we will uh, go with it. That's fine. If you're here, that's cool. But okay, remember, try to be conscious of that little jawline we have there. So maybe before we even get close to that jawline with the green on our pa paintbrush, we're going to go right into our white. And... We are just going to pull it across so we don't lose that jaw. He's been working hard on that neck day. We don't want to make it disappear. Paint night, if you're here, your family. Yeah. Oh my God, Justin. There's another model. Got to put on a shirt. Okay, and remember, we got to toss a little bit of yellow in there. Olive Garden sold it. That's not, I was going <laughs> to, also that's hilarious that it's Olive Garden. I couldn't remember. I knew it was somebody's, what you call it, but I couldn't remember whose. If 
if you're here, your family. Alrighty then. And remember, depending on how much detail you want, you can go through and add like more highlights of yellow like this if you'd like to. Not optional, but look at how it makes it pump. Pump? Pop? Probably is the word I was looking for. And like a pump of yellow. Yeah. Maybe a little bit of yellow in there. I don't know. Build that jawline. Dink, dink, dink. Maybe we just know we're family. Oh, Lisa. You too. All in the feels. But here, I'm just going through and adding some just like highlights of yellow paint. Why not right there? Whatcha? Who knows? Maybe that was a little aggressive, but we're sticking with it. Okay. And see what I mean by nothing's permanent. Like if we're looking at our reference photo and think, oh, maybe we made his jaw a little bit too open. Like we can paint in this line a little bit to thin out where his teeth go, right? Good night, Lisa. Thanks for hanging as always. What am I doing? My brain. All right, we'll just deal with that after, but it looks like I think our turtle's coming together. Let's just get in there. Okay. How's that? How are we at this stage, everybody? Oops. Do any of questions, comments, concerns? I know when we're doing these like recognizable characters that everyone like have grew up with or care about, I know that the process is probably a lot touchier for people. And it hits you harder if you don't think it looks right right away. But we can get you something, right? Okay. Remember, we can play around with yellow. That's fine. We'll deal with that later. He has a dimple up there. We'll deal with that later. Okay. I think it's time for us to get that mask on. Okay. Again, depending on the size of your painting, canvas, turtle, everything, all the above, the size of paintbrush you use right now it might be very dependent. It might not be the same size of brush that I'm using right now. But I am going to use a pointed brush, medium-ish size. We're going to need the color that you're using, right? Like mine's Dontello, so I'm using purple. And white. But we don't want to mix any of the yellow or anything in because we want this mask to differentiate against the background that we made that has a different color in it, right? So we've got purple straight out of the tube. And the first thing we're gonna do, ooh, actually maybe, sorry that I'm sending you astray, maybe get a smaller brush for a second. And we are gonna just map out where we are going to get those little eyeballs, right? We've kind of perfectly laid out where they should go, right? We have this pointy eyebrow, like his mask, and conveniently his eyes are just long, like you can make one line. Looks like he's sleeping for a second, right? And then we're gonna come all the way up, straight. Again, we can like, white can solve most of our problems for this, but there's an eyeball. See how it was one straight line at the bottom? We came up and kind of has one bit of an angle on the left here. It's not a perfect just circle. If you want to make it a perfect circle, go for it. Nothing wrong there. But that is roughly where that eyeball is going to go, right? And same with this side. But just like how over here, this line was longer because it was far away than this line. Same here. This eyeball is bigger because it's closer. And since this eye is farther away, it's going to be a little bit smaller. 
let's just do one little line and a little line okay we've got the two eyeballs they might look wonky we might need to get some white to solve the day but roughly that's where his eyeballs are gonna go okay now we're back to that big brush with purple on our pal paint brushes and we are going to just with that purple paint fill in these sides right same here remembering that nothing's permanent so if you go over the eyeball you drew a little bit that's cool if you find out or think once we're done painting it in you're like oh i actually put that eyeball in the wrong spot that's fine and we can just fill this in here we're literally just going to fill the whole thing with this dark purple because we like painting dark to light in this studio right same over here remember oh i just said that nothing's permanent just repeating that in my own head so stress about these eyes if you have a white that you trust then it like literally just paint this purple all purple like don't even sweat it like paint it in and we will with white paint the eyeballs on top because i'm pretty sure i did it in the wrong spot like when i'm looking at this too like maybe my eyes probably gonna need to come down a little bit more and that's just how she goes and that's okay but do we see him coming along Oh, I can hear Dan's watching The Simpsons. The Simpsons. Okay, so we're coming around the back. I gotta get some more purple out. But we're gonna bring that mask all the way over. Whew. The other side. That was head. So if you see how I guess I just drew that without talking about it. We, I brought it a, over even more. Like, see where his cheek comes out? I brought it even further out. And then we're going to go right atop that head. Don't worry, my paintbrush is very dry right now. It's a prime example of dry brush. Remember how I talked about the sandpapery look? You can see that here. I'll bring it a little bit closer. That's the sandpapery look that I'm talking about. And that just means there wasn't a lot of water in my brush. Sometimes that can be used for, like, sometimes that's awesome. And that's a technique that you'd want to use. Um, but sometimes it's super annoying. And if you weren't aware that it's water is all that you need to solve the problem, you could get annoyed. But see how I went over top his head. And then I came down and swooped on oops and then swooped on back up we can even bring this further over if we want but it's just pure purple right out the tube pure whatever color right out of the tube we want dark the darkest color on the bottom the darkest value on the bottom of whatever you are using See, right now it's funny, he's got like a, it almost looks like Trump hair or something. Right? And again, it can be like painterly and messy on the edge. You can bring it straight over to the edge if you want. You can even paint over on the side of your canvas if you want. I don't care. Okay. And then here's a couple parts that are going to feel a little weird because I didn't talk about them until now. But his shell, right? We have a little part of his shell on the back here. 
And the nice thing is it's just a fraction. So we're gonna come up to under his cheek. We're gonna bring, and I'm still using just straight purple on my brush. I'm gonna cover over some of my beautiful texture I painted down there. And we're just gonna paint that in dark. Okay. His shell will roughly be there. Mm. Just painting this at such an angle it messes with my eyeballs. Okay. So how do we like that? We've got the basic part of our turtle. I think I missed part of his like trap or something. Realistically, I think the green actually should have continued this way. Oh well, that's something we can resolve later. Okay, we've got all of these colors. I guess you can also make his like shoulder over here if you want to, but oh my gosh, my family group chat's just going off the chains right now. Okay, so we started that mask, right? We painted it dark purple all the way across. And now for the easy part, we're just gonna grab a little bit of white and a little bit more purple than white, but we're gonna make a lighter value of purple. And again, use the brush that feels right for you for the size of the painting that you're working on right now. But we're gonna start by bringing this lighter purple from the edge here all the way over with one big swoop and do you see that i'm leaving like some of the dark like almost as like an outline like we painted the light color a little bit darker farther down so that we painted an outline almost that's cool saves us some time Right, and even a little bit like you can add a little bit more white if you want to just add a couple more values like Add a touch more white to your purple to make a little bit lighter of a purple. And same thing, right? You can add a little streak of white. Like this is a fabric, so it's not going to be super smooth. We're going to have some of the wrinkles and the things in it. Let me go closer. More. Mm, where's my mouse? Okay. Maybe I'll go to the bottom right now. Where's me? Oh, no, 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 not that. Me. Meow. Okay. So with this light purple on our brush, there's more paint than water. We don't really want it to go on too translucent at the moment. We're gonna come right to the edge of this corner here. We can bring it halfway through. But then the secret, it's not a secret, but the way to make this look like a fold is now we're gonna come match up to that line that we drew and we're gonna bring this line down. See, we're just building a fold in that mask. Why do I keep wanting to call it a bandana? It's not a bandana. And you can keep going between adding more purple and taking or adding more white to get different values of the purple. But we're gonna add just a little bit of purple in there as we fill in this shape. See, you can tell that there's more white here and I added a tiny touch of purple when I brought into this spot. Okay, and I'm using that same amount of purple and white on my brush and I'm gonna come over top of the eyeball and bring a line on down. But I wanna keep the darkest purple around the eye socket, right? Around his eye socket is the darkest. If you paint too close, oops, like I literally just did as I was saying it, we can go back in with purple later so it's not the end of the world. But we're gonna bring it on down as well. 
And again, keeping conscious around the eyeball, even if we're going to change that eyeball. But see, by painting the purple first, we've kind of did some work for ourselves, which is nice. And another little line right here. Trust me. I'm not hearing anything from you and that's a good or a bad thing. And we're coming across and we have uh, the same little good beauty. Um, but we've got the same white on our brush. And when we come over his nose like this, we are going to go one square, one square. See how they're not touching each other though. And another square of that light color. And we're gonna make one more square, but this one is attached to the rest of the band, Diana. Right? And a tiny touch underneath. Radical. Thanks, Banna. Okay. Oh my gosh, I can't. Okay. Now, again, a very optional part. Remember how we added a little bit of yellow into the purple there? You can... If it went astray for you before, don't do it. But if you want, you can add a tiny touch of yellow to your purple and same, bring a streak of that through. Oh, maybe I'll come closer again for it. A streak of the yellow on top of those placements just to show again where our light source is coming from. Hey, even on this side if you want. So now we're gonna get some black on our brushes. Actually, just kidding, before we do that, sorry, bouncing around like a crazy person. With this white purple, one thing that we do have to do is fill in a tiny touch of this lighter color up to, but not touching those other shapes that we did there. Do you see that? Up to, but not touching. Up to, but not touching. What time is it? 9.48. Oh, okay. We're going to get our black out onto our black. Yeah. It's going to be black. I lied to you, it's white. Get white for now. We're gonna use black in a millisecond, but just while we have white on our brushes, let's just, if you wanna fix your eyeball, this is how you do it, right? Pure white on your brush, not much water because you want it to go very opaque. But see, like I can bring this white into this eye and now it will be bigger, right? If you feel like your eyeball needs to be bigger, nothing's permanent, no mistakes. We can easily paint this eyeball bigger. Right? And if you painted this white, this line through, right? We painted a line through our turtles and a face. Maybe now is a good time with that white just to uh, erase some of those lines. I'm just panicking because I looked at the time now, but uh, we've got this, we've got this. But right, we've got some white in there. Okay, right, filling that up. Now, we are gonna get our black onto our palettes. 
and we're gonna start throwing out some outline. And the outline is messy, chunky outline, so don't let it stress you out. You don't need as much black as you think you do on your palette. That's probably way too much, as usual. You want to take a smaller pointed brush, right? Like pointed usually helps to do outline. If you want to do it with a Sharpie, you can, but this one kind of looks good if you do it in this chunky style. You can use square brushes as well, right? Because you can paint with them flat that way. Beauty. So you've got black on your palette. We've got a Ninja Turtle in our faces, okay? You want a little bit of water on your brush so you can pull it across, but not chocolate milky. Like just, I just put my brush in the water once or twice, came to my palette and I'm just mixing my brush around so I get all the bristles filled. And we're gonna remember that pressure is how we make thin lines, right? If you put just the tip of your paintbrush down, it's gonna be a nice little thin line just like that, right? Because we use just the tip of the paintbrush. But if you put the whole thing down, like every bristle, like look at that big old line, because you pressed really hard on it, right? So be conscious of that too as you're trying to make some of these outlines. But let's start with um, just his face, I guess, hey? And since this is kind of like cartoon style -y, like you can do sharp, aggressive lines. Like see how I didn't follow the circle? I went ch -ch to just kind of sharpen it out. Again, completely up to you if you want to make it um, a full smooth outline. You can bring it around. It's okay if you go out of the lines a little bit. All right, we're gonna come under that chin of his. We're gonna come down that neckline of his. And all of these lines are really gonna start bringing him together. See, 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 see. And up here. Remember, water will help you pull the paint across well but you don't want it to be that chocolate milk consistency because you want these lines to go on nice and opaque like, right? We can outline his mask, but the very last step is gonna be bright white highlights, right? That are gonna make a lot of these shapes pop. his nose. I just drew in his eyeball. That's okay. Right? Always being conscious of how hard you're pushing on your paintbrush. It helps sometimes to put your hand, again, professionals use like a stick so that you don't put your hand on the painting, but not the end of the world. I use it all the time. As long as it's dry underneath your painting here, you can put your hand down to support some of that strength that, or some of the pressure. So you only are using the tip of that paintbrush. All right. And around those eyeballs. Remember, even if again, like we come back around with this dark around his eyes, and even so, if you feel like, oops, you painted over his eyes again, who cares? You go back in once it's dry with white again to fix that. I put that in there nicely to fix that problem. This canvas is crooked. All right. And if you want it to be even more comic booky, you can start adding some like drawing stress lines. Like see how, where you draw a line, see how it's just like sketchy a little bit more, right? Like I'm drawing some little scratches out here. I did a, a parallel line right over top. You can get a little like wild with it if you want to add some texture in there. Banner says 90s Ninja Turtle movie was the best. Hey, I have, I'm not fighting that. Does anybody else, who's, what, what are other people's opinions on which Ninja Turtle movie? I personally, the new ones are weird. 
They scare me. <laughs> okay, let's keep filling in some of these lines here. Original first one's best for show. Love it. All right, see how we're pulling some of these lines across to make that mask flip and fly. Same over here, right? Just darkening some of these lines that we've already done. And in his head, let's outline. I'm just like singing along. Just made his head kind of a funny shape, but that's fine. I feel like that's a tagline of mine too, but that's fine, but it's fine, but that's fine. Over and over and over again. Okay, now let's bring this cheek here. Meow. It is, it's fine. It is fine, right, Justin? It is, that's fine. <laughs> and coming on down these lines. Again, we're just kind of re-emphasizing all these things we've already done. Re-emphasizing? Re Pardon me? Okay. And let's do a couple little lines on his neck. If you want to get extra comic booky, you can add some, like, hatch mark lines. Hash mark? What did I just say? Cross hatching lines is what I meant to say. And under this neck of his, he's got some more lines to make them all make sense. Same over here, another good old line. I try to like be a little more organized for you guys. Like my brain would be like, <laughs> and I notice I still do anyway. And we are going to go just right on down there too for that good old neck we've been building. Realistically, like we can color this line a little bit darker, thicker I mean, to just show that there's some shadow under there. I'll bring some people who want to add the most more detail. I'll show you a couple more how to bring it in there, but... For now, that'll do. Remember, watered down paint goes on translucent. So if you add some water to your brush, you can like lightly brush over some spots if you want to. Circle that Adam's apple we worked so hard on. Okay. Sam over here. We're just still going through those lines. If you've lost them in painting, that's okay. You can ad lib where you want them to go. Like maybe you painted over some of these areas. Eh, whatever. I just kind of like a triangle there. Again, I keep going. I keep saying Go Go Ninja Turtles in the Go Go Power Ranger theme song in my head for some reason. Go Go Ninja Turtles. Why? I don't know. I truthfully, I think I was more of a Power Ranger girl at this age. How's that? So Power Ranger next? Hey, I guess. Pff, I guess, hey. Power Ranger wouldn't be too bad, actually. How's that? 
from far away looks a little bit better. Remember, always take a step back from your painting. Very important. Pink Ranger painting would be fire. It would be lit. Let's do it. Pink everything, suckers. Remember, like, we can put some, like, scratches in their faces if you want. Right? By doing thinner little lines. Maybe he's got one up his jaw. I don't know. Oh, I keep thinking maybe we still should be zoomed in. You met the Pink Power Ranger in Blue River, BC. Okay. Well, that's amazing. Are they Canadian? Okay. We're coming back up to this mouth of ours, and it's we've done most of the work already, okay? We're just going to make a line atop, a line on down. Oh my gosh, I did see Bling Empire, and one of the power, is he the red Power Ranger? Is on it, isn't he? And he's very emotionally unstable. <laughs> <laughs> Spoiler alert, he's very emotionally unstable. She was dating an Olympic skier and I worked at a helicopter ski resort. Okay, that's amazing. Love that. So they were just going on a little helicopter ski ride. Okay, sorry painters, when we were going to the mouth here, we are following the same outline we already did, but see how I brought the top line over and the bottom line over a little bit? They went over this line. Important. And then one little tiny tricky is gonna be where his teeth line is. We're gonna do a curve. You see, we're gonna start at the bottom, curve out and come back in and just, you can paint that black if you want. Right? And keep that line coming all the way across. Sorry that we're over two hours today, you guys. I was gabbing too much at the start, story of my life. And bring this line across. Remember, if you want, you can be using a Sharpie. I won't tell anybody. And same thing, let's curve that on this side. You can bring the line over a little bit. And he's got some like weird like dimple like lines <laughs> on the side. Zoom out for a sec, please. Oh my gosh, sorry, I'm not even paying attention. Can it is that helping? What can I help with? He's got an upper dimple up here too. The dimple's probably the wrong word. It's good. Cool, cool, cool. Okay, we'll go close. He's got like a crack lip, just like me right now. P chapped lips. I think he's even got one on the top. But again, the scratches and the markings can be as much as you want. You can push those as far as you want. You can even add some in your mask at the top if you want. I don't know, up to you. Now for these teethies, it's gonna be one thing, again, it's just like funny the things that stick with you, but I just will never forget about one of my teachers telling, his name's Carl, he's the best, um, telling us that when you draw someone's teeth, like a human, probably not a cartoon, it's a little different, but when you draw somebody's teeth, you don't wanna like individually outline every single tooth. You wanna try to imply the teeth line. And we're kind of doing that today too. So. When we start on the side here, I kind of made that, <laughs> I kind of made that a little bit uh, bigger than I probably had to. Like we can probably bring that in a little bit. Sorry, everybody. It's probably a little bit thicker. That teacher was a coward. <laughs> Don't you talk bad about him. He's my favorite. Okay. So the first thing we're going to do, excuse me. Yeah, see, Justin's going to come after you too. We're going to come to the middle of this back end of his mouth here. And we're going to start by, I, I got a smaller paintbrush, a thinner little baby paintbrush. By a line up. 
A line farther down. Another line up. So it's almost like a heart beat. Right? Tooth, tooth. And then we're going to come down a little bit and draw a line that curves in the same direction as this line, right? This line at the bottom of his mouth curves up. And this little line that we're doing right here for a millisecond here, it also curves up. Okay? And then we're going to imagine that it goes over on that part and it comes almost at the end here and it's going to pop back out. Me with a little line down. Remember, white will save our day if something looks weird or off. And then just casually, here and there, we're going to do a couple lines. Doop, doop. But not lots of lines, just a couple. Maybe there's a couple down here. Maybe there's one there. See how they're very small. Oops. And they don't go all the way down. And there's one there, and maybe there's one there. I don't know. But from far away, maybe let's put one there. From far away, it does look like he's doing that. I don't know. What is it? A grimace? <laughs> is that the right word? <laughs> maybe not a grimace. And guess what? On the other side, too, he has another little U shape like we did before. I'm built like a grimace RN. I don't even, I don't even, that went over my head because I don't even know what that is. Do you know what I thought of when I said Grimace immediately? McDonald's Grimace, the big purple guy. Okay, just kidding. Wow, I should have known that. When I said Grimace, I thought of Wallace and Gromit for some reason. Does anybody know who Wallace and Gromit is? Did I sleep? I don't know. I don't. I thought I did. <laughs> I thought I slept. Apparently not. Wallace and Gromit, such a good cartoon, right? I agree. Okay, we've got our turtle, part of the turtle club, basically done here. In most parts, we are just going to get his little shell. And again, it's like we're lucky. It's just implying that the shell's there. We don't really have to do much work. You liked Calvin and Hobbes. Ooh, that's a good one too, Banner. Ooh, Calvin and Hobbes is a good one. So to make this good old shell we've got here, we've got black on our brush, and we're just going to kind of outline that shape that we originally drew. And on the inside, there's a hole. We're gonna darken it up just a little bit. It doesn't have to be full. It's a dark area of our painting anyway, so we don't have to get too into detail there. And then again, we're gonna come off the edge of that and just bring it on down. It's gonna look so like nothing, but we know that a shell belongs there. And with our last step of white highlight, which we're about to get to, We'll be good to go. If you have this big white space right here like I do, I might have to paint a little bit over top of that, but that's okay. All right. I'll just do that quick while we wait for y'all before we go and do that white highlight party that just brings the action. Can you tell that my brain just runs on, like, music quotes? <laughs> okay, so we'll just... Bring the action of the club. Yeah. <laughs> okay. This is just me covering up my beautiful texture that I loved so much. But to make it into the shell, I'm just going to put a little bit of lighter color in there. And remember, too, depending on detail, how far you want to push it, you can go back in with purple and white with even more than you did before and add like light purple in throughout here. More steps of that. Like it's all about how many layers you want to put on to get the effect that you want, right? Okay. 
right? We've got a Ninja Turtle. And now just to make him more visible on our page and just to make him pop, pop, we're going to go back into our beautiful, bright white highlight step. So we want pure white on our brush. We want not much water because we want that to go on nice and thick. And I'm using just a pointed paintbrush. Does it match this one? Almost. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. So I have pure wet on my brush, a little tap of water just so that it pulls nicely, but we want it pretty thick and opaque like. And we're gonna come in some of these spots that we want bright highlight on. Like, oh, look at that, baby. And we remember that just like we did before, it's the right hand side. So the right hand side of all of our shapes is where we're gonna put a little white highlight, exactly like Banner just said. Well, pow! Okay? Right, a little white highlight, little white highlight. But like I always say, be conscious that you're not covering up all of your work from before, right? Like we wanna see that purple and those lighter colors. We wanna see the black. We wanna see colors that you've already put on there before. Oh, the paint's getting me now. Because then what's the point of doing all that work if you can't, pow, bam. <laughs> I love that. Um, what's the point of doing all that work if you don't even see it at the end, right? And if you want the white to go on a little bit more opaque, like that's like you just add a little more white and water onto your brush, right? The same techniques we're using the whole time and the same, whatchamacallit, it, apply. That bam just scares you. <laughs> <laughs> I laugh because I'm the jumpy one that gets scared of things all the time and gets like pissed when jumpy noises scare me and then here I am just doing it to you. <laughs> I just read Banner's comment, okay. <laughs> all right, maybe let's put some white in our mask. I don't know. You can put a little white highlight right here. Update, I can hear my husband scraping the living room floor from my drips. <laughs> my bad. <laughs> they get used to it, trust me. Six years later, Dan's like, glitter, okay, fine, whatever. But see again where I'm coming with these white highlights. Like, why does it make it look so much more profesh? It's funny that I'm just bringing up all my like art school teachers today, but like I have another teacher that like this would drive him crazy because he, oh, broken smile. Welcome back for number two. First of all, didn't see you there because it still says that there's nobody in here. So that's funny. Um, uh, you have splatter all over your monitor and your computer desk. That's your part of the club. That's your official, you Made it into the Tatesky Studio regulars. Filled with splatter and paint, glitter and joy. <laughs> That's awesome. When you're here, your family. <laughs> yeah, see, like it happens. We gotta get it. Okay, I'm still going through with this white highlight. Like, should I do one above that lip there? I don't know. That looks cool. Should we do one with that yellow highlight there? Just a tiny little touch, touch, sure. One thing that's gonna be very important that everyone's gonna need to do though is a pretty stark white highlight here underneath his mask. <laughs> Why does my brain just like not wanna say mask? <laughs> Behind his mask here and then along the back edge of his shell just so that that differentiates differentiates between the background and his stiffs Ilum's out of here great to see you as always thanks for the um, rainbow have a good night sorry i didn't get you some up drips before you left you might have missed them so I'm putting just a couple white highlights inside that shell so we know that that's what's up and that's what's happening there because it is just a couple little random shapes on the side. There's not really enough. You can even put some lines in there if you want. There's not really enough space to make it look like a shell, but now we know that that is a shell.
And what? Should we make one right on his neck? Uh, can you guys even see that? Maybe not. I'm just swipe, swipe, and white highlight as we go. Oh, yeah, what I was saying about my teacher, Charles, he was very, um, Charles was a great teacher, too, though. Don't put him in the Ken category. Okay, guys. <laughs> um, like, because he was, he's an amazing painter as well. But, of course, for the rules, like, you're only supposed to put pure, real, true, pure, pure white is only supposed to go in the brightest highlight of your piece. Everything else is supposed to be like a little off white. Like it's not supposed to be pure white. Pure white is only supposed to be in the in the whitest part of your painting, and there shouldn't be this many whitest parts of your painting. He always would tell me about that I overused highlights, and then I came and started teaching people paint nights out here, and just started teaching all y'all what I do. So sorry. <laughs> And again, cartoon's very different than actual painting, but uh, not that cartoon's not painting, but you know what I'm saying. How's that? I think that's looking pretty nice. And again, remember, like, you can go in with splatter if you want, and again, into some back parts if you wish. Always have your rag close to wipe up your splatters if you don't like them. But I think we've got a Ninja Turtle, hey? Only 15 minutes over. It's funny because last week we did a whale and it was like not even an hour. Like it was short. The whale was quick last week. I remember being finished before 10. Like, finished, we saw everybody's... You, you know, it was so, so short that you missed it. It's okay. <laughs> That's really funny, though. I'm just splattering some purple around. Oh, sorry, actually, I guess it would probably be helpful for the painting to be right side up for you guys to see what you're supposed to be doing right now. <laughs> so just... Don't mind me just having a blast over here. Boop. And again, depending on people's paintings, like some of you might need to go in with black and like darken up some of these areas so that he sticks out better. Maybe, baby. Oh no, that's not right. Maybe you want to distinguish between that shape a little bit better. I don't know. So you can play around with it forever. Maybe. I don't know. Maybe. It's my favorite word of all time. I'm just bumping it up. Thickening some outlines. But... She done already had hers is. <laughs> I like, RuPaul talked about where that came from on one of the finales or whatever. And it was like at a restaurant or something. And somebody tried to take their bag, somebody else's food. And the woman was like, yeah, the lady at the late night fast food. No, she already done had hers is. And he took it to the bank, literally. Okay. I think we are complete. Oops, for a second I just panicked that I didn't record it, but it always records by itself, so that's ridiculous. Okay. I think I'm going to call it. How's that? The purple's wrong purple, but that's okay. 
Oh, we've got some paintings getting sent in already. Heck yes. Should we go? Remember, if you're new here, we send them through DMs. Instagram DMs. My Instagram is the same as Tatayski. Okay. Uh, where are we going here? Where's my Instagram? You guys, check out that beauty. Ooh, you got some nice color in there. Super jazzed about this whole paint night. Ah, Cinderella. Your husband's gonna love it. Right, didn't you say? Right, yes, yes, yes. Going to love it. You got the colors down packed. Sorry, guys, I should have told you to add some pink in there because that's nice. Boyfriend, sorry. Sorry. Okay, Justin is sending me... Oh, 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 oh. She's reading all of our messages. <laughs> okay. Let me pull it up. Okay. It's me! Okay. Wait a second. You guys! Look at that bun. It has a paintbrush in its mouth. Okay, that. Justin. He even signed it in a Tay. In, in the Tay Sig. Sweater and everything. It's my hoodie and my glasses. Justin's now coming for my job. <laughs> okay, I love that. Oh my gosh, Justin. It's so cute. Since when do you draw? <laughs> okay, let's get it in here. Okay. Um, love. Ooh, the blue. Justin, that was really good. I'm proud. Okay, amazing as well. Just some Friday morning paint nights. Okay, V, you're saying you're not done yet. Oh my gosh, look at this one! Who cool to do it in the angle like that. Oh, that's a line from before. You guys, blowing us all out of the water. Oh, you weren't joking that you did all three! Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Okay, you guys. Beautiful. Beautiful. The angle's so cool. Oh my gosh, acid too. With your paint markers and stuff. Ooh, that turned out cool too. Wow, you guys, these are so good. It was so hard. Yeah, but it doesn't look like it. You look like you did a good job. Um, so proud. Oh, I just saw your question from before. I'll answer that later. And look at that. Blue king in this one. They are all so good. V, did you say, you says they're still not done, but did you, I'm going to check on here first. All I can read is I'm still not done, but did you send, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, you have pictures in there. Um, also great. Look, everybody did so good. I'm so proud. Teacher moments. Proud teacher moments. Oh my gosh. We got that one. We've got that. Those two. Oh my gosh. Time to fashion a face mask. <laughs> you are not wrong. Oh my gosh, you guys. I'm so proud of all of you. Again, I never know. Like, I think it's going to be easy, but I don't know. And then everyone, 
inspired me for side drips. Nico, they turned out beauty. Yeah, I guess, hey, if you, we could have went like this to get the drips this way. Wow, they all turned out so good. This will be a good video, a good YouTube video for sure. Okay, proud. I will wait for a second to make sure that everyone sent them in and I'm not missing anyone. Cause last time I missed a couple people's live and I felt sad. Um, I felt sad that I didn't show everyone's, but yeah, I got to make a mask. You're right. And then I put this over top out. Oh, I put these over top the mask, a cookie, a target. Thank you guys. The best. Where's my thumbnail picture? Okay. Do I Photoshop the mask on, you guys? Last time that I was Batman, we put a sleeping mask on my face. <laughs> because it's just going to be me like this back. Isn't it? Maybe this side. And I have to be like this. I guess my glasses should be on if I'm just gonna put on a face mask underneath it. Wow, they're filthy. Can't see. Right? Is that good enough? <laughs> I always love thumbnail times. People are always just like, who come in right now are probably like, what? Do I have a clean paintbrush? Yeah, I do. What do I do with this? Like it's a weapon. In my teeth. <laughs> it would look, my teeth would look like that better. Just growling instead. Again, it's just Photoshop. As usual, it takes the fun out of everything. <laughs> but this is the best I got. Draw a Ninja Turtle with Taylor. <sighs> Maybe I should be Master Splinter. Maybe that would be better. Just like how I was Baby Yoda with the Mandalorian. Maybe I should. Maybe I should. But who are we kidding? Realistically, I think I think I can make something out of that. Kat, are you saying yes to Master Splinter as well? Is that what you're saying yes to? Master yes. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Love it. Perfect. Everybody. Master Tay. Eh? Eh? Okay, okay. Great. Perfect. Well, I think that's good, right? Whether I'm Splinter or another ninja turtle or eating a piece of pizza i feel like i should just have a pink ribbon i should like i said i have to be justin's picture right basically <laughs> is there a pizza in this hand is my hand just a fist is there a weapon we'll never know you'll have to wait and see till the morning <laughs> well <laughs> of usual i've went over my time um, thanks for coming today, you guys. Everybody did amazing. What is that? Everybody did so good, as usual. Proud teacher moments. Um, we will be back next Thursday for... What are we doing? Oh my gosh, we're doing that cutie little gorilla. It's gorilla paint night. It is an original of mine. He's covering his face with a leaf. It's super cute. It should be easy because there's not much face to it. Um, but yeah, we'll see how that one goes. Thanks for everyone to come to this one. I think it went really great. Um, uh, catch me on Instagram, Caffeine, YouTube, Etsy, TikTok, Tay Tay Ski across the board, you guys. I'm always keeping you posted on what I'm up to. And um, we'll see you next week, okay? One day soon, we'll have just like a chill paint, like where I just am, I'm painting and wishes to hang out. That'll come at some point. But until then, catch you on the flip side. Thanks for coming. This is a fun one. We'll catch you next time. Bye, everybody.